Our scripture today is from Philippians 2, verses 5 through 8. This is the New International Version. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. One morning when my son Devin was an infant, I had him in my arms as I descended the basement stairs. I was wearing a bathrobe and slippers with worn soles, and the stairs were carpeted. Really dumb. And the obvious happened. I fell. Normally, when you're falling down the stairs, you would fling out your arms to catch yourself. But I was holding an infant. Instead of protecting myself, I held Devin tighter as I went down, curling my body around him and fell hard on my tailbone. He was fine, but I had pain from that fall for months. I would do the same thing a million times again because I have agape for my son, sacrificial love that puts others ahead of self. With this love, I will always prioritize his well-being over my own. If you are a parent or have even spent much time with kids, I'm sure you understand. Most of us, most of the time, love our children with agape. This is the kind of love that is described in our scripture this morning. Jesus went to the cross because of agape, because he so loved us, he was willing to die for us. Agape isn't a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's an attitude that leads to action. You could say it's a mindset that guides your life. Jesus didn't take advantage of his power as Lord and deity. He has a big advantage over us, the ability to shape the universe. Yet he didn't. He cast his lot with us and followed God's plan obediently. In fact, he didn't even come as a human king, but as a servant. He not only became human, but one of the lowest humans in the human status pyramid. And then he humbled himself further by accepting humiliation, torture, and death for our sake. Paul tells us in our scripture that we aren't just to be grateful, to benefit from Jesus's agape. We are to have his mindset. We are to also give up our advantages over each other, to take the lowest position on the corporate organizational chart, and to walk with God in humility, serving others. That's tough. It's against our human nature of looking out for number one, of making sure that we're getting all that's due us, of putting ourselves first. It's against our admiration of and grasping for status, power, fame, money, and material things. How do we possibly do this? How do we love others with agape, sacrificial love that puts others ahead of self? I want to present some advice from Bishop Michael Curry in his book, Love is the Way. He offers this as a structure for how we might forge a commitment to live each day out of the love of Christ. First, study the life and teachings of Jesus daily. If you plan to take a shower, you don't turn on the water and then stand in the bathroom while the water is in the shower. You have to stand under the running water and get wet. It's the same with Jesus. If you want to live in his love, 
You have to stand under the waterfall of it, get soaked by the source of it, so that you are refreshed in it regularly. This is why it's important to read and study your Bible, not just once a week during worship, but daily. Get under the shower of God's love often. Second, pray daily that God would use you as an instrument of his love in the world. This will help you build the mindset of Christ within you. When you are talking to God regularly, God will use your faithfulness to transform your mind. I can simply tell you that if I didn't pray for things like wisdom and patience daily, I would lose my temper a whole lot more. I would say more things that I regret and not be as attentive to the needs of others. My habit of Bible reading and prayer keeps me on course as much as it's possible for me to be on course with Jesus. Third, keep the ordinary codes of courtesy with everyone, whether it's an old friend or a stranger that makes you feel a little uncomfortable. At the very least, be polite. This includes on social media, our words have great power to heal or to hurt. Before you hit the send button, stop and think about the impact your words may have. Don't be a troll. Fourth, don't do violence. Most of us would never strike another person, but would you do violence with a sharp tongue? That's harder to avoid, isn't it? Even harder to avoid is doing violence with your mind. Indulging in violent, vengeful, hateful thoughts takes your mindset away from Christ. We all have these kinds of thoughts from time to time, and that's okay. But avoid ruminating on them. Deliberately turn your thoughts to something else. Do something that's distracting. Pray for the one you're angry with, but don't actively willingly contemplate violence. Fifth, keep in mind that the way of Jesus is to seek justice and reconciliation, not victory or revenge. Revenge is all over our culture. It's the theme of endless movies, TV shows, and Facebook posts. Our focus on me first cultivates revenge. If something bad has happened to me, somebody's got to pay, right? This is not the way of Christ, not the mindset of Jesus, who forgave his persecutors as they were driving nails through his hands. We are called to justice, but to be faithful to Jesus, it has to be justice with compassion, not vengeance. Our goal should always be reconciliation where that's possible. Jesus came to restore our relationship to God. We are called to restore our relationships with each other. Sixth, you will develop the mindset of Christ when you serve others as he did. Jesus's ministry was consistently focused outward. He did take time alone to be with God, and we should following that example too. But most of his time was spent healing, preaching, feeding, visiting, teaching, touching, being present with all he encountered. Every faithful Christian should have an outwardly focused ministry, a way to provide service to others. For some of us, that means cleaning up a neighbor's yard or cooking a meal for 130 people. For others, it may look like praying over our prayer list or making phone calls to those who might be lonely. Find the place where your passion for God and your love of God's people meets the needs of the world and then serve. Seventh, sacrifice your personal preferences, privilege, and habits for the well-being of others. Someone in our congregation recently gave their entire government stimulus check to our Wednesday dinner program. 
I'm sure there are many indulgences they could have used that money for, but instead they sacrificed their personal preferences and privilege and just handed it over. They thought that feeding our neighbors was more important than anything else they could have done with the money. That's agape. This is agape that people show when they listen to worship music that isn't their favorite because they know it is the favorite of that person a few pews up. This is the sacrificial love that was shown by this congregation when we hosted the Black Lives Matter event. I am well aware that that wasn't high on the list of things to do for many in our congregation, but out of an abundance of agape, we did it anyway. And I wish all of you could have seen how much that gift meant to those who were present. The mindset of Christ, when it feels itself grasping onto personal wishes at the expense of others, let's go and let's God work through that sacrifice. Finally, walk with Jesus daily in the way of love. Don't just talk the talk, but walk the walk. Be the person you would like others to be, that God calls you to be. To love like Jesus, have the same mindset. Don't seek privilege, but the welfare of your neighbor. Don't go after status, but in humility serve others. It's that easy and that hard. Let's encourage each other for the journey. Let's pray for each other, that as the body of Christ, we would be Christ's body for the world. And let us pray. Almighty God, as your people, guide us in following your Son, Give us hearts to love and serve you faithfully and sacrificially. Help us set aside our privilege, our personal preferences, our tendency to selfishness and me first, so that your love is apparent through our lives. Give us Jesus's mindset that we would have an attitude of giving and generosity toward all and that this would be reflected in all we do. In the name of Jesus, who saves us. Amen. And now may the Lord of grace bless you, that you may have Jesus's mind set every day of your life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.